All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I promised earlier that I would do a story video, and I've already filmed it and everything, but I decided it was rather boring just watching me talk about something. So I decided to go ahead and add the footage of me talking to a video of me flying a spacecraft. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be flying this spaceship to try to obtain the highest speed possible. I think uh, some of you guys may enjoy watching that. And uh, I may end up uh, doing like a little competition to see if you guys can beat it. And if so, I might try again and actually make a video about this, seeing how fast I can go. I think I'll start off my story series with the story of the most trouble that I've ever been into. You see, I was uh, back in high school, I think sophomore year, and uh, I was sitting in class and the janitor came and was talking to us, uh, basically scolding us for not keeping the bathrooms as clean as we ought to have. I was rather bored, and I was sitting up in the front row, and the janitor was standing right next to me, uh, yapping away, and uh, he had his keys hanging out of his pocket, and I recognized that one of the keys he had that was actually facing towards me was the same key that he used to unlock the uh, doors to the classroom. And so I started studying the key, and I thought that I might uh, try drawing the key, like draw it to scale, and see if I could actually recreate the key. Because uh, you know, it might be cool to have a key to the classroom. Just I, I thought of it just kind of as an exercise to see if I could actually pull it off, see if I could make a key just from seeing the thing. And so I doodled the key. I kind of tried to do it to scale. And then I went home and I found a key that was similar. I had to file it down a little bit to uh, make the points uh, match up. And I even had to braze in an extra point because uh, I needed an extra high spot. And... Uh, you know, I brought it back to school, tried it out. So of course it didn't work. In fact, I almost got the key stuck in the lock. That would have been interesting. So after trying several times, I did a lot of research on keys, and I finally found like uh, the spacing that the points needed to be and the approximate values of what I should expect. And after trying a few times, I finally got it to actually work in the door. I had to jiggle it around a little bit, but the thing finally managed to work. And I could open the door to the classroom, which was, you know, pretty cool. And I, I went around the rest of the building trying out doors. Most of them I had to work on a little bit, you know, jiggle the key. But I could open up every door on the inside of the building with this thing. And uh, having been on the cross-country team and getting locked out of the locker room many times, having my stuff locked inside the locker room, get back late at night, you know, having this key might not be so bad for me because I could then get in and not have to, like, call somebody to come unlock the locker room for us. And so I decided to keep the key. I think I only found the occasion to use it hardly at all, really. And I just basically left it on my key ring and completely forgot about it. Uh, a couple of years later, we had this uh, college class that would get out early and we could like basically wander the halls, do whatever we like. And uh, uh, we'd usually, uh, with me and a couple of friends, would go to the library and hang out. But uh, on this particular day, the library was actually locked and the librarian wasn't there, which was quite unusual. And uh, this girl that was with us, the one that I actually had a crush on, and uh, she really liked getting in the library, and she actually had to get into there to use the library's computers in order to do an assignment. So having the library locked on her was actually a very, you know, a really bad inconvenience for her. I could be the hero here. So I went up, and I, I pulled her aside, and we kind of secretly opened up the library, and she went in. We got her things done, and we were coming out. I probably would have totally gotten away with it. If it wasn't for the fact that on our way back out, when I was shutting the door behind us, the vice principal was walking down the hallway and saw us closing the door. Turns out having a key to something that you shouldn't have a key to is very much against the law. In fact, it's considered a felony. The vice principal called the police, and the girl that I was with managed to play dumb, and she managed to sneak away. But I was brought into the principal's office, and they suspended me on the spot. They called my parents down. We had a chat with the police officer, and I had to tell my story, which is probably similar to the story that I'm telling now. I don't think even today they believe that I actually made the key. 
and uh, since they figured that it was possible that there could be other copies of the key out there, they decided to rekey a couple of the locks, like on the library and on the band room, because there was a lot of valuable things in there, and if there was keys that people had access to, then somebody could get into those rooms and steal things, and that would be very bad. I don't think they keyed any other doors than that, but uh, it might have been a good idea, but it would have cost just a huge amount. Which was, of course, good for me, because I was, of course, the one that had to pay to change those locks over. So they ended up going through as much of the surveillance videos as they could, and they proved that I didn't actually enter any rooms and basically hadn't used the key that they could see up till that day. Since I was an honor student, they believed that I didn't have any ill intent with the key. In fact, I just had it and didn't really think to do anything with it. And so they ended up letting me off with just the suspension, and I was able to come back to school in a week. I was kicked out of the Honor Society, which was unfortunate and probably cost me winning the Sterling Scholars competition, but uh, other than that, I didn't really suffer too many consequences from it. But uh, definitely the moral of the story here is that if you find a key or manage to do something like this, uh, definitely turn it in. Don't try to take advantage of it because it's not a good idea. I know if it were to happen again, I certainly wouldn't have kept the key. I certainly would have, uh, I certainly would take it and, or not make it in the first place. I mean, it's nice to know that I would be able to make a key just from having seen it or seen a picture of it. In fact, I'm not going to post any pictures of the key just for that reason. You know, being smart and being able to do things can definitely get you into trouble. Anyway, let's talk about this uh, video here that I've got going on in the background. I don't know if you've noticed, but I used a gravity assist off of Joule to knock my orbit down close to the sun so that I could take advantage of the Oberth effect and get as much energy out of my fuel as possible. See, what's going on is if I'm moving at 100,000 meters per second and I add 1 meter per second, that doesn't sound like a lot, but considering that the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, it's uh, proportional to the square of my velocity. Adding just a few meters per second when I'm already moving that fast equates to a huge amount of energy. And once I get out away from the star, I can actually keep all of that energy that I gain. I certainly could have done it better, and there are much better ways to accelerate to high velocities. But things that we can actually use that you know aren't nuclear, that don't violate the nuclear test ban treaty, this general way that I'm doing it here might be the best way that we could actually get a spacecraft going to the highest speed possible using things that humans could actually do. The astute viewer might notice that I have disabled heating because being this close to the sun would destroy almost anything you have in Kerbal Space Program, but I don't think the heating is actually that big of an issue. It's something that I could think of ways to get around, like put it large reflectors on the spacecraft to reflect most of the sun away, and it's in a vacuum, so I think that's something that I can ignore here. And I certainly could use the sun's energy to propel a spacecraft, perhaps not using solar panels, maybe some reflectors that concentrate the sunlight and superheat a gas into a plasma and eject it out the back, similar to the ion thruster I've got here. Maybe not quite as efficient, but you get the idea. And in the real-life solar system, the velocities would be approximately six times greater because the sun's a lot bigger than the sun in the Kerbalverse. So if you guys do want to take up my challenge and see how fast you can get a spacecraft to go, I want to see how fast it can go once you've escaped the solar system, so out beyond ELU. Uh, if you want to do a real-life scale solar system, I would like to see that as well. But I want to see how fast we could get a spacecraft going to another star, and uh, maybe there's something I haven't thought of. Uh, just make sure that it's something that humans could actually do in the near future, like we have the technology to do it now. Also, let me know what you guys think about this video, and I'll see you all next time.